Hi, uh, my name is Ben, and I'm one of the developer relations engineers covering Android for Cars. Uh, and today I'd like to talk to you about what's new with the Car App Library. To begin with, let me give you some background on what the Car App Library is. At its core, the Car App Library is a set of Jetpack modules uh, designed to do all of the heavy lifting when it comes to writing apps that you can use on Android Auto and Automotive OS. Right now, that's for navigation and point of interest apps. Uh, but it does so by providing a set of templates that are designed to meet driver distraction standards across the world and which are capable of adapting to all of the different car screen sizes and input modalities for you. It launched publicly a little under two years ago and has only gotten more powerful and feature rich since then. In this talk, I want to cover the major new features in 1.3, um, starting with the map template. Uh, with this template, navigation apps can now also display a greater amount of information and relevant actions while also displaying a map. Um, like the existing navigation templates, you must declare the navigation templates and access surface permissions in your manifest to use the template in your app. Similarly, you're also responsible for drawing the map yourself by providing an implementation of the surface callback interface. With permissions and map running in place, all you need to do is build your map template and return it in your screen's on get template method. When building your template, you must supply a header and some content, which can be either a pane or an item list of rows. There are some restrictions on exactly what you can display when these are used within a map template, like not showing an image. Uh, so be sure to check out the documentation for all the big details. Optionally, you can also specify a map controller to enable map interactivity, like tapping or scrolling, and other map-related controls. You can also set an action strip, which is great for controls not directly related to the map, uh, such as opening a setting screen or a search screen. Next up, we're introducing alerts to make it possible for users to interact with your app without losing the context of the app and uh, routing information. For example, if there's an increase in traffic, uh, you can ask if they'd like to accept a faster route, or if you're a ride-sharing app, you can see if they'd like to accept a rider. To use alerts, you first create them using the builder and then display them using the app manager's show alert method. Pretty simple stuff. Optionally, you can mark one action as the default to have it be taken if the user doesn't do anything before the timeout you set. Uh, in the spirit of providing more context relevant to your app, you can also now customize the travel estimate. Uh, so this allows you to set an icon, some de descriptive text, or both. Uh, to do so, just use set trip icon and set your text on the travel estimate builder when you're refreshing the navigation template. Uh, finally, to enable in-app voice functionality, we're introducing the Car Audio Record API, which will allow you to record audio from the car's uh, mic. Uh, as with other form factors, you're going to need to get your user's permission before you're able to record audio. Uh, and there's a very helpful method called Request Permissions that lets you do this uh, using the same code across both Android Auto and Automotive OS. From there, using the API is pretty similar to Android's audio record API, but it's better suited for the cars because it provides the same interface across both platforms. And that's it for the major 1.3 features, but there's a bunch of smaller ones as well, so be sure to check out the release notes for all the smaller updates. Finally, uh, after you've implemented these new features, you'll want to test them out. With the developer head unit 2.0, now available in stable Android Studio, you can test them out easier than ever with Android Auto. All you have to do is use the USB flag when starting the developer head unit, and your device will connect by accessory mode, just like it does in the car. No more fiddling with developer settings and ADB tunneling. And with that, I'd like to say thanks for listening. If your app isn't one that can make use of the car app library, don't worry. Uh, there's still maybe a way to reach your users and their vehicles. Media, messaging, and video apps are also supported in addition to navigation and point of interest apps, uh, depending on the platform. Uh, so please check out the Android for Cars link, uh, ask, uh, me later today at office hours or the device lab. Uh, thank you.